everyone, welcome back to this uh, GoLang tutorial. So in the last video, we were able to create a, a user, but we missed something pretty important. It's now when we create a user, we uh, save the password as a plain text like that. And it's really bad. And this is something we should and we will uh, change right now. Uh, so just remember, if I send a post request to slash user slash register, we get user with email already exists. If the email it's already uh, choose in the database, if I do this and I change the email to something unique, but I'm going to give another error with the username. So if I change the username and now I can create the user, but we still have this issue. So uh, in node, we use bcrypt. Uh, to do this hashing and you're gonna find it's pretty easy because it's the same name in uh, Golang. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna jump in the out domain and if you remember we have this function set password. Right now we just return nil and nil and that do nothing. Okay so this is what we're gonna change. So what we're gonna do now it's uh, we're gonna make use of this uh, bcrypt stuff I just talked about. So first we need to get the byte of the password uh, to make the hash. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to create a byte from the password get right there. So uh, yeah, it's byte. Uh, I don't know. I can explain that. Uh, I can send you some link in the description if you want to learn more about byte. If you don't know what is that, it's pretty important. But yes, so finally, why we need that is because bcrypt have a function called generate uh, from password and this thing as you can see take a byte right there size of byte so that's why we need to uh, confirm to that so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have a password hash and I don't really care about um, like the error right there and now here what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pass the byte password and here the second argument is the cost so the cost here can be uh, pretty much like uh, the cost if the given cost is uh, is the cost given is less than min cost the cost will be set to default cost blah 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 it just finally it's almost like when we do bcrypt you put like 12 6 round whatever you want here finally what we want it's we're going to use the default for now but example when we're going to create tests and stuff like that you want that to be at the minimum so this way those uh, this thing don't going to slow your test because it's pretty like uh, heavy so yeah so what we can do for now it's just use bcrypt that default cost and if you look here the default cost was 10 and i forget to say where bcrypt came bcrypt came from golang org right there and uh, this golang uh, stuff come right there so it's this package so go dot golang org crypto bcrypt and you can see so generate hash from password Take right there, generate, return the bcrypt hash of the password at the given cost, blah, 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 and all your other stuff. So you see it can return by an, an error right there. And I forget to, I'm going to use the error, so I'm going to use it. After that, because I want to return pointer to a string here, what I'm going to do, it's I'm going to just transform the hash now to a string. Because this is what I want to save. And finally... And I'm going to do this if error is not nil. I'm going to return nil and error. And else I'm going to take the password. And here finally I'm going to return the password and nil. Like that. Now the thing is, is if you remember uh, in the last video, we did remove that. But we need to keep it now. And now what that means is when we set the password, now this password is going to be the hash version. And now we want to pass it for the data password, uh, sorry, like that. And now we need to pass the password to the user. And why I need to do this? It's because this password here, this user, the password was a string like that. So it was a, pre, uh, a string. So we need to use the value of the pointer and not just the pointer. So that's why you pass this uh, asterisk. And after that, we send that to the create. Uh, the create take the, the full user and where we have the, the create is a user right there where we have the function create take the user domain I'm gonna push 
this user to the uh, user table and uh, you're gonna return everything and you're gonna insert so now if i restart remember i cannot use chai now if i came back still have all the same issue nothing more but now if i send a password and password 4 and i save still work but now the difference it's now if you look here look at the password now the password is ash and this is much better now uh, the thing is um, now I think we should delete those users. I'm gonna delete them like that because we don't want a user with a, a password of password. But now if I resend that, now you see uh, ID number five. Now it's Bob one, and you have a hash parse hash version of the password. But both are the same password. So yeah. So that was a pretty simple one. Now what we can do? It's because we have done uh, this logic here. Uh, I think in the next video, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna jump on the uh, uh, logging stuff because right now we can register, but how can we log in? And also, one thing we miss, and I think we can do this right now because it's not too long, it's uh, uh, generate a, a token, uh, generate a jailability token so user can use this to uh, do the authentication. So I think this is what we can do right now. So. The way I want to set up the token, it's I like to um, do that to my user, uh, to add that as a method to my user. So what I mean by that, it's I'm gonna create here a, a function where there's gonna be a pointer to a user and I'm gonna call uh, this function uh, gen token. This thing gonna return nothing for now until we figure out what we want but yeah so that's going to be this function and i think i'm going to just pass this inside my user right there going to make more sense to have the generation uh, a method in the same place of where the user is and what we want to send uh, for this user it's we want to create a struct we're going to create a struct called gwt token and that's gonna be the thing we want to send when we uh, gen the token. So here, what I'm gonna return is a, a pointer to this gen token. Oh, sorry, it's not the return here. The return is here, and I want to return an error, like that. And what we want for the GWT token, is gonna to be pretty simple stuff. We want an access token, so that's gonna be what we send back to the user, and you need that inside is headers. So uh, in the JSON, that's gonna be access token like that. And we also want to send him some information about the expiration date. And that's going to be a time of time like that. And that's going to be expired at, like this. Now, this gen token, gonna need, uh, uh, we're going to need a library for that. Okay. And the library going to be this one right there. One sec. So that's going to be GWT Go. So this is uh, this one. It's pretty simple. So finally, just a JSON Web Token uh, implement uh, a GWT implementation in GoLang. So nothing crazy there. It's pretty simple. All that it's used. I'm not quite sure about if this is the best practice of what I'm going to do. But yeah, we're going to see. So I'm going to just make it import, and I'm going to just. Um, Yeah, I don't, I don't even know why I did put a comma. I'm gonna sync. D don't forget, you can do go get uh, to make um, the change. Okay. Okay, I think it's import. And uh, so yeah, so this gen token function, we're gonna create a GWT token so you call that with gwt.new and here finally uh, the new take assigning method okay so the new take uh, assigning method and assigning method finally you just need to follow this interface but the beauty of this library it's uh, they have done already some method for that and the way you can use those is just by calling gwt dot uh, get signing method right there and as you can see, this one gonna return a method. And I want the H has 
256 finally you just oh sorry 256 you just say which kind of algorithm you want and they're gonna do the all the stuff they need with, with that and uh, and yeah so now here we get back at G, uh, when we get back it's a uh, pointer to a token after that here i'm gonna do my own logic to the expire at so for the expire at what i want it's i want the date of right now and i want to add to this date a number of hour and i'm gonna say so one hour multiplied by 24 so we want one day multiplied by seven so we want the token to be valid for one week after that the gwt token it's a pointer to a token and the pointer to a token if you look back here what that gave us <coughs> sorry they give you the raw the method the header claim and everything and a claim here um, this is finally what you need to put to make like um, like for a type to be a claim you just need to have a valid but one sec a standard claim need to have like an expire at an id and stuff like that okay so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna say claim it's gonna be equal to a gwt that map claim so now here you can pass whatever you want to this token uh, as a to the claim and now what i'm gonna do it's i'm gonna have access to my u because it's a method to a user and i want the id so inside my token i want them to have this um this uh, uh id inside the uh, the gwt uh, uh stuff finally uh, and after that i'm gonna have a x xp to be a expire at so this thing i've created here the date the time and i just want that to be the unix one after that so now so here yeah sorry here for anyone we return a pointer to a token it's not really the token yet it's just a way for you to build a token after that so you build a token and after that here you get your access token finally right from here by calling gwt token that sign uh, sign string and the sign string here get the complete sign it token why well, need the key so the key is gonna be uh, the signature uh, the, the finally the key when you uh, do the signature so this way you can know if this is from your application and stuff like that and what we're gonna do it's this thing need to be uh, whatever interface but what I'm gonna do it's because I want to use just the byte version of my OS that get env and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to my dot env I'm gonna create a function uh, I'm gonna export GWT secret and I'm gonna say this is a this is a secret and finally now here when I'm gonna get my env I'm gonna say GWT secret and remember when you want your environment variable you need to say source did dot env like that finally now we have uh, our access token and also here that return an error if i remember yeah so if we have an error so if error is not nil return nil and the error you can wrap all this error to make it easier for your app and know where that break and stuff like that for now I'm, we're gonna keep it like that and finally now here i'm gonna just return finally um gwt token struct where I'm gonna fill everything and I'm gonna return nil for the error for the access token that's gonna be the value of the access token we have created there and for the expire at time that's gonna be this expire at uh, what we just create and now with all this stuff what can we do to change a bit about what we send back to the user because you know you see now when i register i just send back the user information but it's not really that much useful so what are we gonna do it's now we're gonna jump to the uh, handler user in here in the register user i'm gonna create a type here called out response so here that's going to be a struct of what i want to return to the uh, client so the recipe uh, client and what i want to return 
it's a user who's going to be a pointer to my domain user and that's going to be inside the key user because remember the struct going to be sent like kind of an object i want them to inside the key user that's going to be my user but also i want the token who's going to be a domain that gwt token to token like that now what that meant it's the fact that now here where we left the command generated the gwt token we're gonna generate it we're gonna say token error and now you can gen the token by calling the user you get from the register gen token like that if we have an error i want to call bad request with my response writer and i'm gonna send back the error and i'm gonna uh, an early return here so I don't catch to my JSON response here at the end. And finally, my JSON response here, we're gonna just change it to become now out response with the user equal to the user and the token equal to the token. Like that. So now if I restart my server, looks like nothing is break. We should have nothing break it there. But now if I create Bob 10, Bob 10 and I send now look what we receive. We receive an object of user because like I told you, we have our auth response. We will send a full user object inside the user key right there. And the token uh, uh, token key is gonna be this JWT uh, struct. We have create, we have those two key and we get expire uh, access token right there. And you get the expire app. So now if you take this, token and you go to gwt.io and you paste this token right there you see the expire at and the id and the id if we look here was six and looks like it's this thing and yeah it's uh, so they see you see the algorithm was really hs uh, 256 and now here you can uh, finally uh, check for the signature and i think that was this is uh, yeah the, yeah like that so uh hope uh it's good uh i think i need to change something maybe I it looks like the signature didn't really take it i think i maybe made a mistake uh if i have i'm gonna fix it in the next video but i hope you enjoyed so if you see right now it was pretty simple to just add a token the the thing is, yeah, it's easy to create it. Now it's going to be a bit harder to get it. So this is what we're going to do in the next video. Where now we're going to use the, uh, we're going to do the logging stuff because right now we just, yeah, I can register start to your app, but how can I come back? So yeah. yeah, it's something to check. And after that, we also need to make sure that we can get the token from the headers because remember a GWT token going to be sent um, every time with the header authorization. And when I'm going to send that, example, if I have another request and I put inside my headers authorization and here I'm going to have bearer with my token, my plan is when I get this token, now my app know which user this is. And now that with that, we're going to put the user inside the context and each time this user is going to post and create a new to-do, we're going to know who, he in, uh, who this is, which user is. And now we can finally just say, hey, this to do what it need to be below this user. And if the user create a to do without being, without sending this header, we're going to just reject it. And if a user send this header, but the header, uh, it's expire, you're going to get a, 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 an unauthorized error. And also if the user have an account delete, but the token still uh, there uh, we're gonna reject the user and say hey uh, you not arise also so yes yeah, so i hope you enjoy this video and let me know in the comment if you have any kind of question i'm gonna put uh, both a uh, library right there inside the docs so if you want to read about them so i hope you enjoy and we'll talk in the next one bye everyone